Nicole, the math lady. Today we're working on finding missing factors. Now you might say, finding missing factors? Come on, Nicole. Haven't we been doing that all along? Like since like lesson three, I think? I don't know. Somewhere in the beginning of this book, right? Missing factor, missing number in multiplication. We divide. We do the opposite to find the answer. So what's so different? And, you know, all the way in this lesson. Ah, well, today finding missing factors, here is the catch. We've been doing finding missing factors when we have whole numbers that we're looking for. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it when we're looking for either mixed numbers, right? Whole number in a fraction or decimals. And the good news is the process is still the same. Take a look at your example here. 3x equals 22. So we still do the same thing. We do the opposite of multiplication. We divide to find the answer. So we're going to do x equals 22 over 3. But then, rather than leaving it like that, let's go ahead and turn that into a mixed number. So uh, we know that goes in 7 times. And 1 is left over, so 7 and a third is your answer. So it is okay to have a mixed number as a missing factor. What happens when you have a decimal? The process is still the same. But take a look. So we have 0.4x equals 0 0.019. 0 0.019. So we're still going to do the opposite of multiplication. We're going to divide. So this side we are left with our x. And on this side we have 0 0.019 over 0 0.019. 0.4. Now we're not going to leave this like this. We're actually going to divide to find out what that decimal is. So let's do it. I can do it over here. 0 0.4 into 0 0.019. Now, you know something needs to happen whenever we have a decimal in the divisor. We have to clear the decimal. And we do that by moving that decimal as many places to the right as we need to clear it. We only need to move this one once. But you know that we have to actually, what you do to this side, you got to do to the other. So we're going to move this over here, and our decimal will be over there. It's going to be moved over one space. Now let's do the math. 4 uh, goes into 0, 0 times. 4 into 0, 0 times. So we can put our 0 here. 4 goes into 1, 0 times. 4 goes into 19, 4 times. We have 16. Three left over. Now the difference here is we're going to keep going until we get hopefully a whole decimal number uh, or a full complete decimal. So let's keep going. Let's add our zero. And we know seven goes in. Seven times is 28. And it leaves us with a two. Let's add one more zero. Four goes into 20. Five times and we're finally done. So our answer to this problem, it's okay to put this as a decimal. 0 0.0475 is your answer. So when you have a decimal in the problem, write your answer as a decimal. When you don't, write it as a mixed number. The last thing I want to show you is that sometimes you might see problems written like this, which to you might look backwards, right? Because we're so used to seeing that, that variable on the left-hand side. But I want you not to sweat it. Like, this is absolutely okay. It means the same thing. 82 equals 5y is the same thing as saying 5y equals 82. Essentially, you do the opposite of multiplication, you divide, and we're just going to be working on this side. Now, if it really, really bothers you, feel free just to rewrite it so you feel more comfortable. You can always write 5y on this side, 82 on that side. That's okay, but really, it's the same thing. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. We're going to be left with a y on this side and 82 over 5 on this side. Well, 5 goes into 8. One time, 3 is left over, which is a 32. And then 5 goes into 32 six times with 2 left over. So 16 and 2 fifths is your mixed number. In case those of you who got lost my multiplication, let me just show you what I was doing. Let's do the long division. There we go. 3 is left over. 6. Boom. 16 and 2 fifths. That's your answer. Okay, that's it. It's that simple. Finding missing numbers. You've been doing it all along. This is just a fresh take, doing it with mixed numbers and decimals. So carry on, my friends. You're doing it okay. All right, so I call the math lady. That's it for me today. I will see you next time. Or hopefully I'll see you on the website where we're doing more of these practice problems. Okay, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.